So this week, Apple released iOS 26 to the public, bringing a load of brand new features to your iPhone. But as ever, it also means that there are a ton of new settings that you need to know about. So in this video, I'm going to show you 10 brand new settings that came with iOS 26 that I think every iPhone owner needs to think about changing. Okay, let's get into it. Clearly, with the new look in iOS 26, home screen customization is a big deal, and I'm going to cover it in more detail in a separate video. But for this one, let's just focus on the two main changes that you might want to take a look at. First, if you go to your home screen and long press to enter edit mode, then tap the edit button in the upper left corner and choose customize, you'll now see a new option at the bottom to choose clear icons in addition to the usual light, dark or tinted options. If you choose clear, it does exactly what you'd expect. It gives your app icons that frosted glass effect that's now a big part of the iOS 26 design language. You can also set this to light, dark or have it adjust automatically depending on the time of day. Then if you go to your lock screen and long press, tap customize, you'll notice there's now a small drag bar in the bottom right corner of the clock. You can use this to increase the clock size, dragging it downwards to position the clock just below the center of your screen if you want a really bold oversized look. Or you can leave it anywhere in between to fine tune how it looks based on your personal preference. A pretty minor change, but one that's probably going to impact millions of iPhone users is the ability to set your own snooze duration when creating an alarm. To do this, you don't go into settings. You'll want to open the clock app and tap into the alarm section. Then you can either tap to edit an existing alarm or create a new one. Once you're in the alarm settings just below the snooze toggle, you'll now see a new option to set the snooze duration. You can choose anything from one minute all the way up to 15 minutes. So if that default nine minute snooze never really worked for you, you now have the flexibility to customize it. Do you ever feel like you're only scratching the surface of what your iPhone can do? Do you find it hard to remember all of the tips and tricks people show you or that you watch in YouTube videos like this? If so, you should definitely check out my training portal, iPhone Essentials Plus. It's more than 150 tips for the iPhone with more content being added on a regular basis, covering every aspect of your iPhone. Each module contains lessons and each lesson contains a tutorial video, a step-by-step -step guide with screenshots and a downloadable PDF. So no matter how you like to learn, you're covered. You can work through each lesson in order, or you can pick and choose what you want to learn at any given time. There are no ads, no sponsors, just content, and you can access it on your iPhone, your tablet, or home computer. Plus, no monthly subscription. This is a one-time only payment with lifelong access to all of the content, including all future updates. If this sounds good to you, scan the QR code on screen, or click the link in the description of this video or pinned comment iOS 26 is undeniably a huge visual change, and even though Apple has toned down the liquid glass effects slightly between the initial developer beta and final release, you might still find the new look tricky to use day to day. If that's the case, there is a setting that you can change. Head into system settings, then accessibility, then display and text size. In here, you'll find an option called reduce transparency. Toggle this on, and you'll notice straight away that areas like the app library or control center look a lot more solid and easier to read. You won't get quite the same visual style that Apple intended, but if you were struggling to see things clearly before, this is definitely worth turning on. If you head into settings and then battery, you'll notice that the entire battery section has been given a visual refresh in iOS 26. Right at the top, you'll see your current battery percentage along with the time and percentage of your last full charge. Below that is a graph showing your daily battery usage, and you can tap view all battery usage to dive into a more detailed breakdown. This looks more like what you might remember from previous versions of iOS. Scroll further down and you'll find battery health, which still includes the option to enable optimized battery charging, and if available, set a maximum charge limit. But the most significant new addition here is power mode. If your iPhone is capable of running Apple intelligence, you'll see two options under power mode low power mode, which you may already be familiar with, and a new setting called adaptive power. With adaptive power enabled, your iPhone uses artificial intelligence to intelligently manage performance when your battery usage is higher than usual. That might mean slightly dimming your screen or delaying non-critical background tasks to help stretch out your battery life. It's an opt-in feature, and for anyone who regularly finds themselves running low on power by the end of the day, it is definitely worth trying out. If you're enjoying the content here, why not sign up for my weekly newsletter, which is all about tech news and tips 
delivered free to your inbox each Friday. Sign up via the QR code on screen or the link in the description. If you've ever had the frustration of listening to music with your AirPods or other wireless headphones only for your iPhone to suddenly connect to your car's Bluetooth or a nearby speaker, there is now a simple fix in iOS 26. Go into System Settings, then tap General and scroll down to AirPlay and Continuity. Inside this menu, you'll find a new option called Keep Audio with Headphones. Just toggle this on and your iPhone will prioritize staying connected to your headphones unless you manually switch to another device. Apple has added a brand new section to settings in iOS 26 called Screen Capture, giving you greater control over how screenshots and screen recordings behave on your iPhone. To access it, go to Settings, then General, and scroll down to find the Screen Capture option. When you tap into it, you'll see several customization options. At the top is a toggle for full screen previews. When enabled, screenshots will now appear as full screen previews rather than just as thumbnails in the bottom left corner. This gives you immediate access to editing tools, markup, and if supported, features like reverse image search or chat GPT. If you prefer the old thumbnail style, just toggle this off. Below that is automatic visual lookup. When this is turned on, your iPhone will automatically analyze your screenshots to try and find useful information using visual lookup. This works well in some cases, but it is hit and miss depending on what's on screen, so whether you keep this on is entirely up to you. There's also an option to disable CarPlay screenshots. By default, when you take a screenshot while connected to CarPlay, your iPhone captures both your phone screen and a screenshot of whatever's showing on CarPlay. This is useful for content creators or tutorials, but if you're just a regular user, you might want to switch this off to avoid clutter. And finally, there is a toggle to choose between high dynamic range HDR or standard dynamic range, SDR, for screenshots and screen recordings. HDR gives you brighter highlights and more detail, but it also uses more storage. SDR is perfectly fine for most people, so unless you specifically need that HDR content, you might want to stick with SDR. Apple has made some really useful changes to how the phone app handles unknown numbers in iOS 26. To find them, go into settings, scroll down and choose apps then tap on phone. Now scroll to the bottom of this page. Previously, the only option here was to silence unknown callers, which would automatically mute calls from any number not in your contacts. That setting is still here, but there's now a brand new feature called screen incoming calls. If you enable this, unknown numbers will be passed to an automated screening system where your iPhone will ask for more information about the caller before deciding whether to ring through. The idea is that spam calls, robocalls, or telemarketers won't make it past the screening, which should cut down the number of unwanted calls that you get. There's also a call filtering option. If you turn this on, any missed calls or voicemails from numbers that you don't recognize will be moved to a dedicated unknown callers list in the phone app. That means that it's easier to prioritize your callbacks, separating the ones that you care about from the ones that you don't. And just above that, you'll see a new option called detect call waiting. With this enabled, your phone will try to recognize when you've been put on hold. You'll be able to step away while you're waiting, and your phone will alert you when a real person comes on the line, giving you a chance to jump back in. I've tested this with a non-urgent helpline, and it worked, though I don't know if I'd really rely on it for really important calls just yet. Still, it is a good addition if you want to try it out. Blocked contacts now have their own dedicated section in the privacy and security part of settings, making it much easier to manage. To find it, open Settings, scroll down and tap Privacy and Security, then scroll almost all the way to the bottom of that page and look for the new Blocked Contacts option. When you tap into it, you'll see a full list of everyone that you previously blocked. From here, you can tap on any contact to unblock them if you want to, or tap the Add Blocked Contact button to manually type in a phone number or email address that you want to block. This used to be spread out across Settings in the Phone and Messages app but now everything's in one central place, which is much easier to keep on top of. If you use your iPhone with Apple CarPlay, there's a pretty major new feature in iOS 26, CarPlay widgets. To access them, swipe one screen further to the left from the usual split-screen CarPlay view. This new page houses all of your widgets, and just like on the iPad or Mac, they're small app previews that are both customizable and interactive. To edit your widgets, open System Settings, then tap General, then CarPlay. Under the My Car section, choose your connected vehicle, then tap Widgets. 
you'll see your available stacks and the number of these depends on your screen size. On our car we get two, but I've seen some setups with wider displays that have three. Each stack can hold multiple widgets. Use the drag bars to rearrange them, tap the red minus icon to remove any that you don't want, or press add widget to insert something new. I was surprised by how many widgets were available here. It seems like iOS is pulling directly from your iPhone or iPad widgets, so even some niche ones show up. For instance, my coffee machine app includes a widget that lets me start brewing remotely, and now I can do that directly from CarPlay, something that I've actually wanted to do before when I'm heading home. Scroll through the list and see what might be useful to you. And if you decide widgets aren't really your thing, you can toggle them off entirely using the switch at the top of the page. Another minor setting that's likely to have a big impact on a lot of people is the new lens cleaning hints feature. If you go into settings, then choose camera and scroll all the way down to near the bottom of the page, just one item up from the bottom, you'll see an option called lens cleaning hints. If you toggle this on, your iPhone will try to detect when it thinks your camera lenses might be dirty and it will show you an on-screen prompt suggesting that you clean them. This can be really useful if you're someone who doesn't often wipe your lenses. They are glass after all, and while they do a good job of resisting dirt, it only takes a smudge from moisturizer or a bit of grease to really affect your photo quality. So there you go, that was 10 settings brand new in iOS 26 that I think every iPhone owner needs to know about. What do you think? Any settings that I should have included? Drop me a comment and let me know. And don't forget to check out the channel for loads of content all about all of the new operating systems that have launched this week. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to the channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.